So we're gonna be talking a little bit about rage quitting, some of the history of theories of aggression. I'm gonna define rage quitting, go over my methods for the study, look at reasons why people reported quitting, uh, cover some insights from the game experience questionnaire, go through my conclusions, and talk a little bit about future directions, because this, I think, is a really exciting piece of research that I'd like to see move forward in the future. So I started thinking about rage quitting when I was working on my dissertation. <coughs> and uh, it occurred to me, in the literature, there's a lot of focus on aggression. There's the cognitive neo-association theory, which has to do with adverse events that stimulate thoughts and feelings associated with fight or flight. There's the social learning theory, which postulates that we learn how to be aggressive, either through observation of other people's aggression or through direct interaction with other aggressive people. Script theory is just kind of a more specific social learning theory, where you learn scripts for specific events and you learn how to respond aggressively in specific events. The excitation transfer theory really just has to do with if you're physically excited and another event happens nearby in time, the excitement from the first event will be transferred to the second event, making you even more excited and much more likely to be aggressive. And then we have the general aggression model, which kind of takes all those little pieces and puts them together into one cohesive whole, with the thought being that all of these little pieces don't really explain aggression as a whole. And I was thinking, you know, none of these theories really explain aggression in video games, specifically rage quitting. All of this is a good starting place, but it doesn't really get at why players rage quit, what fuels it, and what motivates it. So I started looking more in the video game literature, and I found that there's some really good work on frustration in video games, focusing on in-game and at-game aggression. In-game aggression is things that annoy you that happen in the game, so this boss is really hard, this world is really big, versus at-game aggression, or at-game frustration, which is things that frustrate you at the game. I can't use this interface. I don't know where these buttons map to. This game's responding really slowly. I thought, well, this is a really good jumping off point to study rage quitting. So I put together a survey asking people all sorts of in-game and at-game questions about their rage. And I threw the survey up online at uh, Texas Tech. So what is rage quitting? I'm defining rage quitting as video game specific hostile aggression, or the abrupt cessation or suspension of gameplay that is sometimes accompanied with aggressive outbursts or vitriolic verbalizations. So this is a rage quit. This was the definition that was provided to the undergraduate students who participated in my survey. So as I've mentioned before, this was a survey. I collected 254 pieces of data from Texas Tech University <coughs> undergraduate students aged 18 to 27. Uh, these students were participating in uh, Introduction to Psychology, so they have to do a certain number of research credits, so these were intro students. 54% uh, of the respondents reported having rage quit within the last year. 64% of those respondents were male. Uh, the average length of play is 30 minutes to three hours for these particular respondents. And I collected some data about how much experience they had playing games, but there were some limitations to the way I collected this study that I'd like to, that I'd like to go over now. First off, it was a survey. Uh, and the, the data got really messy because there are lots of, has this ever happened to you? Yes or no? And if no, then they skipped a whole series of questions. So I had uneven ends all over the place. So I had to control for n a lot while doing my data. Also, this is the first survey of its kind. So there were some questions that maybe weren't phrased the best. I didn't quite get at what I was hoping to get at. So it's very much a learning experience. Also, because the data came out of uh, Texas Tech, uh, as you may or may not be familiar with Northwest Texas, they're very polite. So there were often times in the survey where I asked for participants to describe a particular event. Tell me what somebody said to you that made you really angry. And I got things like, they were mean, they made me sad, they said rude things. It's like, wow, great. Thanks, guys. So another limitation of the study. But that's OK. I still got some really excellent data. So first off, how often do players rage quit? Is this really a problem even worth investigating? So I've got this data split up by total males and females. And in the males and females category, I've controlled for the different, uh, the different ends, the uneven ends, because we had less females uh, than males. 
Now, the majority of players, it would seem, quit sometime between rarely and sometimes. Now, this is really a couple times a year. Rarely is a couple times a year. Sometimes is a couple times a quarter. Never is obviously never. Often is about every, every other month or so. And then all the time is participants who reported rage quitting about once a month or more. Now, it's hard to see from this, but males just slightly edge out females in rage quitting a little bit in rage quitting, although it was really close. It was very, very close. Then I broke it down by genre. What genres are people rage quitting the most? And <laughs> <laughs> controlling for N, again, we see that males are really rage quitting first person shooters quite a lot. And they're rage quitting more than females. And this is even controlling for the differences in N. So more males are playing first person shooters, but more males are also rage quitting first person shooters. Something I found very interesting, more females are quitting racing games than males are, even controlling for the differences in N. Just an interesting piece of data, because it was a survey, I didn't get the chance to ask the interesting questions of what is it about racing games that makes you so angry? Why? Could you tell me a little bit about this experience? So it's definitely something I'll be doing in the future. And what is the impact of rage quitting? What happens when a player rage quits your game? Well, the majority of players are going back within about a week. Most of them the same day another large chunk less than a week, but there is a non, there, it's not an insignificant portion of the population that's taking one to three weeks to return to the game, or more than three weeks. That's a long time away from your game. And what happens when they're not playing your game because they were so angry? They're going online, they're saying really awful and aggressive things about your game, they're trying to convince other people how terrible your game is. This is not a cool period of time. People are being really aggressive and hostile towards your game, trying to ruin other people's experience. And then there, there was a percentage of the population who reported never going back. Like, I am done with this game forever. Some of these people were a little dramatic and reported that if they fail more than twice, they never go back. Um, so life's going to be interesting for them. But now, why do people rage quit? Looking more specifically at the in-game and at-game factors. And I also included social predictors of rage quitting because I, uh, I felt it was important to look at the social impact of gaming as well. Because sometimes, you know, that social influence will make you more or less aggressive depending on what's happening. So in-game frustrations, as I've mentioned, have to do with the complexity of the world, or the game, the size of the world, confusing dialogue, really difficult enemies, feeling cheated. And now I had a lot of questions, like 80 questions in each of these sections. So I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to highlight some of the more interesting ones. The majority of players reported rage quitting the most when the time that they spent didn't match the reward they got. And this reward could have been either an in-game reward, like an item, a really cool drop, or it could just be that feeling of achievement. Like, hey, I worked really hard, and it feels really good that I got past this boss. So the, the majority of players reported quitting the most when they spent a lot of time and didn't feel like they got anything out of it. Similar to spending a lot of time, another large chunk of players reported quitting when they couldn't solve a puzzle. They just can't move forward. They tried, and they reported trying for days. And that was something that I found very interesting, because I, I did ask them, how long will you try before you rage quit when solving a puzzle? The majority of players reported that they will try for up to 15 hours before saying, I'm done with this puzzle. I hate everything about this puzzle. It's, only, it's a very small percentage of the population that's like, I try for an hour and then I go online and I'm angry and I'm mad and I'm over it. So the majority of people really are persistent in trying to solve this puzzle. And then we have a, a large percentage of people who will quit when they're killed by a boss and a slightly smaller percent that will quit when they're killed by a non-boss enemy, which I think we can all agree is really frustrating. And then I had players rake from one to eight the most frustrating event. So I had them report on events they'd quit on in the past and then rank from one to eight their most frustrating events. And numbers one, two, and three, not being able to solve a puzzle, being killed by a non-boss enemy, and being lost in the world were all very similar statistically. It was hard to parse those apart. Then we have low drop rates, not being given hints on how to proceed when stuck, 
being killed by a boss, when the game is just too hard for your skill, or when the rewards aren't worth the work you did for them. And these, act these rankings actually correlate pretty well with the amount of times people responded quitting to different in-game events. It, this one maps on pretty cleanly. So this was pretty interesting. What we see here is the number one reason, that, or the number, number one most frustrating factor that players encounter is not being able to solve a puzzle. And I asked players, you know, did the game give you hints? Was that hint useful? Did the game mock you? The majority of players said that actually, yeah, the game did give them a hint, but it wasn't really helpful. Um, a, a very small amount of players uh, reported feeling mocked by the game in their failure and that that was sort of what drove them to quit. But it was a pretty insignificant number of players. And then that being killed by a non-boss enemy. This is where it got really interesting. Follow-up questions for being killed by a non-boss enemy. Yeah. Did you perceive this enemy as weaker than you? Like 74% of players said, yes, I perceived this enemy as being weaker than me. It should not have killed me. And then I asked, was there something you could have done to get stronger? Yes. Could you, could you have spent more time? Could you have leveled up? Yes. Did you? No. Why? Didn't want to take the time. So we see here again, coming back to time, not wanting to spend that time. So now let's look at at game frustrations. These are frustrations surrounding the game UI. Difficult button combinations, poor mapping, an inability to use the system because of a disability or a physical limitation, or just general confusion in how to progress through the game. So here we see the, 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 the reason with the most rage quits is slow responses. This is that, I totally pressed jump, and you didn't jump. I pressed it, you didn't jump, I know this happened, I'm done with this. That slow response. Prior knowledge has to do with the game expecting you to know information that it didn't teach you. A lot of players reported getting early, getting frustrated very early on in a game because they just didn't know what they were supposed to do and the game assumed they did. And then difficult controls. Again, with difficult controls, I asked players, was there a way to remap these controls? Again, like 90% of players said, yes, there was a way to me remap these controls. Would remapping the controls have solved your problems? Yes. Did you do it? No. OK, so that's great. That's nice. So they're frustrated with the controls. They can remap them. They don't. And again, I had them rank at game frustrations. We see the number one most frustrating thing for players is when the game does not respond as expected. Then very interestingly, not being able to install or play the game made the list. Now, this could be because a majority of the players in this particular survey were reported that they played most of their games on their cell phone. So it could be they tried to load a game or an app and it just wouldn't play. And that's very frustrating because you know, maybe you were really excited to play this, you read good reviews about this particular game, you were excited to kill time on the train, and now it won't play. So you're, you're angry in general about that. And we've got a delay between input and character action, difficulty using controls, not being able to customize controls, not responding as expected, when the interface impacts your success, and when a disability prevents you from playing the game. So all this is pretty interesting, but when you, when you look at the data as a whole, it still doesn't explain the entirety of a rage quit. So I'm really glad I included some of the social data. And for social frustrations, I was looking at things like griefing, uh, playing with another player of lower skill than you, and just general hateful language. Half of my respondents reported playing multiplayer games at least once a month, with 10% playing two to three times a week, and up to 7% playing multiplayer games daily. So multiplayer is getting a lot of time with participants. 31% of my participants reported always knowing their teammates <coughs> versus 8% who never knew. Now the rest of them fall with fall in between there. Sometimes they know them, sometimes they don't. 45% of respondents reported being less tolerant of strangers in game behavior. That I found a little bit interesting, being less tolerant of a stranger's behavior. Because we actually tend to be pretty tolerant of somebody else's behavior if you don't know them. Because like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't know them, I don't know their customs, I don't know, I don't know where they're coming from, so I'm just gonna be a little more patient. In a game, not the case. I don't know you, I'm way less tolerant of your behavior. Versus only 23% who reported being more tolerant of strangers' behavior. 
Now here's where some of this data gets really cool. Really, really cool. So obviously we see the majority of people quit because another person was being intentionally annoying. And under intentionally annoying and aggressive, I included aggressive behaviors or annoying behaviors and verbalizations. And I asked players, this is when I asked them, tell me, tell me what they said, tell me what they did. My hope was to get a really cool word cloud and have all these really awesome swear words on the board and we could see, hey look, th this is the hateful language that inspires rage quitting. And that's, that's not what I got. With the exception of one word that everybody was perfectly comfortable reporting causes them to rage quit, YOLO. <laughs> So right now my word, my word cloud consists of YOLO right in the middle and then curse words, mean things, made me sad. <laughs> okay, but YOLO, very frustrating. Another thing I found very, very interesting here. A not insignificant portion of the population reported rage quitting because a player was better than them. Another person was better than them and it made them quit. And I was thinking about this just seemed weird to me. Why would you quit because somebody else is better? Uh, okay. Um, and there, there's two, I, I came up with two possibilities for this. One has to do with the perception of cheating. So if, this, if you think that that person is cheating and that's why they're better, you'll respond aggressively to that. The other comes from uh, Baumeister. Baumeister is a social psychologist and he, he postulated that when a person has a high self-esteem, a very high self-esteem, when something threatens that self-esteem and their positive self-image, they respond aggressively. And I don't have the data from this, but I'd like to get it in the future. I'm wondering if these people who reported qu rage quitting when somebody else was better than them also had really high self-esteem and they thought, I'm really awesome at this game. What do you mean somebody else is better? Unacceptable, unacceptable. And so what happens when something threatens your self-image? You get angry, you get aggressive, you rage quit. So pretty cool possible explanation. And then again, I had players rank. And again, we see, I saw uh, the top three options were not uh, statistically different. There was really no difference between when another player was being aggressive, when another player was cheating, or when another player was better than you. It was borderline interchangeable in the data. Then there was a big drop, there was a statistical significance between when another player is better than you and then when another player is verbally abusive. People are actually remarkably tolerant of the verbal abuse. It has to continue for a while, but then we see intentionally annoying and when another player makes a mistake, which I thought was really cool. People are really tolerant of another player just making a mistake. A new player at a game People are like, okay, you know what? I was new once too. I'm gonna be tolerant of this. I thought that was pretty cool. <coughs> then I included the game experience questionnaire. And I, I implemented the game experience questionnaire because I wanted to look at the experience of the game overall, not just the negative facets of the game. I wanted to look at how were players feeling about this game. The majority of players actually reported on the game that they rage quit they were happy with the game, they felt skillful, they felt challenged, and they felt content playing the game. These are all really positive emotions. These are things that you want players to feel. The majority of players thought the game was fun, felt skillful while they were playing, they weren't bored, they lost track of time. Interestingly enough, they reported not being interested in the story, uh, which doesn't match up with some of the data. I think this has to do with People think they're not interested in the story, but the story actually really does matter to them. They just don't, they don't understand that it matters to them. But the, what I thought was interesting, in a game that they rage quit, players reported not being happy when somebody else was happy. And that's weird, that's like a basic human thing. When somebody else is happy, like you get happy with them. It's just, it's contagious. But in a game that they rage quit, they did not have those like shared feelings of happiness and enjoyment. So I thought that was interesting. There's a lot of positivity surrounding games that players are rage quitting. So, in conclusion, rage quitting is real. It happens to males and females approximately the same, although not the same across genre. While the majority of players are returning to games quickly, there is a not insignificant portion of the population that will take uh, three weeks or more to pick up a game again. And the top three contributing rage quitting factors, uh, according to the self-report data, 
is when another player is intentionally annoying, when another player is aggressive, and when the feeling of reward does not match the time that you spent. So what do we do with all this? I'm thinking of this model of rage quitting. I'm thinking frustration, in-game, at-game, and social frustration. I'm thinking enjoyment is actually a part of rage quitting as well. And if a game meets a player's competency needs, so you know, how smart do they feel, they feel good playing this game, their relatedness needs, their, you know, the, that social interaction, that multiplayer thing, and their autonomy needs. Am I making my own decisions? Am I making choices for myself? Am I, am I being self-sufficient in this game? I'm thinking we've got frustration and enjoyment as well as personality. I think personality is going to be a huge contributing factor to predicting rage quitting. And the ultimate goal with this study is to take it forward and actually be able to model this and mathematically model and predict when a game is more or less likely to inspire rage quitting. So I'd like to ex further explore the importance of enjoyment in rage quitting. I'd like to explore the influence of personality on rage quitting. So I think that part is going to get really fascinating. And that will be a really cool predictor variable. You know, you get you bring your participants into lab, give them a, a short personality survey, and then you just plug and chug these numbers in. Hey, this person is, you know, ranks really high for self-esteem. That makes this person really likely to rage quit this game, as opposed to this person who is like, ah, I'm pretty new at games. I'm, I'm probably on the average. Probably going to be way more tolerant and way less likely to rage quit. I'd like to inf uh, explore the influence of different factors of frustration and enjoyment on specific game genres. Uh, explore further the social factors in rage quitting <coughs> and investigate the factors that contribute to a temporary versus more permanent rage quit. I didn't get to explore that quite as thoroughly as I would like to and I think that would be really interesting data to have. What is it that makes a player come back the same day versus never ever touch it again? All right, so any questions on rage quitting? That's my, that's my story. So people that play racing games would never really face a boss. Mm -hmm. So is that why that was like lesser than time versus reward, or was there a pronounced thing within each kind of genre as well? I did. I did my best to to control. Um, and so yeah, if if you didn't play games with bosses, then you didn't get questions about bosses. If you you know if you didn't play games with puzzles, you didn't get questions about puzzles. But that's part of what made the data so messy as well. And so that could sort of be why some of these things were split the way they were. On that note, um, since it would apply to certain games, uh, was there a reason why there wasn't a question relating to uh, frustration at other players? Um, there, there was uh, questions about other players. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't able to include all of my questions. Okay. Um, but the the questions about other players, it was hard to parse apart because when I asked them, you know, what was it about the other players? It was just they were mean, they were annoying. It was like I can't get anything out of that. Um, so I. I I think I didn't frame that question well enough. It was my first time uh, attempting this kind of survey. So it's something that I would hope in the future I'd be able to tighten that up a little bit and see sort of specifically what was it about other players that was frustrating. Mm -hmm. Yes? So kind of re related to that, you've got the, the sick factor of another player making a mistake not leading to much rage. Mm -hmm. But surely that must be related to raging at other people. Like you get angry, but you don't quit. You just rag on the other person because this is very similar to, uh, say, uh, road rage, where because games are very similar, you're depersonalized from the person you don't have mm -hmm. much contact with them, and you've got this fundamental attribution bias, which is where people make mistakes, you're more likely to attribute it to them as a person rather mm -hmm. than the situations around them. You're not going to see that, and you're not going to see it as a mistake. You're mm -hmm. going to see it as something really aggressive. So, like you said, 45% less tolerance to strangers, but it actually seems low. You'd think that was higher because we do have a tendency to view other people much harsher than we do ourselves. That, that is true, uh, and that is actually uh, culturally specific, so it kind of, it depends on um, sort of like where in the world you ask people those sorts of questions. Uh, uh, but definitely, definitely in, in Northwest Texas, I'm sure that fundamental attribution bias was, was there and strong. Um, you think that would just be polite on the questionnaire? 
know, almost I'm, certainly. I'm tolerant to strangers with that sort of perspective of them, but actually, when they're sitting in front of a controller, it's not good. Almost certainly. Again, um, another limitation of the study is, you know, when you ask people to self-report, they want to be perceived as nicer than maybe they really are, a little more tolerant than they really are. Um, so that was almost certainly a factor. I would like to, in the future, be able to sort of actually manipulate different aspects of a game and maybe actually watch people play games and watch people rage quit where people can't tell me, oh, no, I'm really, really tolerant of this, when in reality, maybe not so much. So, so that was almost certainly a factor. I mean, it would be really interesting to see the factors that uh, go towards getting angry and abusing a person, so staying in a game and abusing another teammate and factors that make you angry mm -hmm. voice off yourself. Mm -hmm. that, that, that actually would be really fascinating to look at, what makes you stay and, and grief versus just leave the game. That would be really fascinating. If you think about it, it's actually pretty remarkable that I had 45% of people report being less tolerant. That's, I think, I think that, that speaks highly to the fact that people are maybe not very tolerant <laughs> of other people's behavior in games. Mm -hmm. The fact that you know, people hide behind anonymity and being able to actually express themselves virtually, uh, which is different in a social environment where you have to put on that mask, Oh, and almost certainly. I mean, it, when you're playing online with somebody, you don't have to see the tears you cause. <laughs> so you can you can be as mean as you want, and it just it doesn't matter because you back out of the game, and then it's fine, and they never know you, and you don't have to see that look of sadness. Whereas face to face, it's much harder to be mean to another human being. Much much harder. I'd like to believe that it's much much harder <laughs> to be mean to another human being face to face. So, but so certainly that anonymity and being on. Um, that sort of being detached from the person that you're interacting with possibly contributes to aggression. Hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, just uh, one of the slides that said that a large, very large proportion of people uh, reported being frustrated in regard to people that were being intentionally in the way. Mm -hmm. um, so, can you speak a little bit to like, what exactly that means? Because I think that's also more sort of like a person, because obviously you don't know who that person is because you're not in anonymity. Mm -hmm. So, is that just like a perception? Probably just a perception that's going to be. Well, there's, there's that one is their, their own perception that somebody's being intentionally annoying, but I, I included examples of behaviors that sort of, as a whole, the gaming population agrees is really annoying behaviors. You know, like, like if you're in a co-op sort of game, not acting cooperatively, just like running ahead, starting all the events and leaving your team behind to die. Um, you know, a little Leroy Jenkins action, you know. <laughs> We've worked really hard to plan this, and now you're just going to run in and ruin everything. Those sorts of behaviors is what I was trying to have people think of. Now, again, self-report, and they may have not entirely understood questions, could have biased some of that data. But I tried to give pretty clear examples of what was intentionally annoying behavior. So, all righty. And th if you have any more questions, feel free to talk to me uh, later. I'll be around all day. So thank you. <laughs>